Hajia Mariam Inachi Roma was born on 11 September 1954 in Borno State. She attended Amadubello University, Zaria, graduating in 1978 with a degree in political science and later obtained a postgraduate diploma in public administration. She worked as cadet editor NTA Kaduna before joining the Federal Civil Service where she worked from 1980 to 1985. She then became chairman and chief executive of Intins Investment Company. In 2003, Chiruma made a bid to become the People's Democratic Party PDP candidate for the Borno South Senatorial District. She was appointed Minister of State for Women Affairs in July 2005, replacing Rita Akpan. She retained this position in the major reshuffle of January 2007. In August 2005, she started a nationwide advocacy tour of the 36 states of the Nigerian Federation on matters relating to child's rights and discrimination against women. Before the 2007 elections, she called for a percentage of electoral positions to be reserved for women decrying the marginalization of women in Nigerian politics. During her time in office, the federal government approved the national gender policy in pertinence of gender equality and children welfare in the country. In January 2007, her ministry issued national guidelines and standards of practice for orphans and vulnerable children. Speaking in May 2007 of the action plan spelled out in this report, Chiroma said without taking determined steps to address the specific needs for children, there will be no chance of meeting the Millennium Development Goals. After leaving office, Chiroma became National Women Leader of the PDP. Hajia Mariam in Nachiruma also served as Managing Director, National Inland Waterways Authority, Lokoja Kogi State, Nigeria. She turned around water transportation in Nigeria and embarked on massive enlightenment programs about safety on Nigerian waterways. In December 2014, she was recognized by the ECOWAS Students Body West African Students Union Parliament, WASO with the Wasub Kwame Inkuma Hono. The Nigerian coordinator for Wasub, comrade Daniel Emeka Uwajuko, described her as a great woman, leader and mentor, an example of selfless service for both women and children rights, with positive effect on the youth for the contributions to nation building. So today on Woman Crush Wednesday, we're crushing on one very amazing woman, though she's late, but her legacy still lives on. One thing I loved about this woman is her fashion sense. Despite the fact that she had to, you know, hold a political office, support her husband, she made sure that her fashion sense was very, very visible and very inspiring as well. And today, and uh, apart from her fashion sense, her love for you know serving humanity and um, concentrating on women and children she did remarkably well as the former first lady of um, nigeria and uh, who is this person she is late mariam babengida may her soul continue to rest in peace we miss her and we love her even in death let's check out woman crush wednesday Mariam Babangida, born on 1st November 1948 and died on the 27th of December 2009, was the wife of General Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida, who was Nigeria's head of state from 1985 to 1993. She was credited with creating the position of the First Lady of Nigeria and making it her own. As First Lady, she launched many programs to improve the life of women. The Mariam phenomenon became a celebrity and an icon of beauty, fashion and style, a position she retained after her husband's fall from power. 
Marian King was born in 1948 in Asaba, present-day Delta State, where she attained her primary education. Her parents were Hajia Asabe Halima Muhammad from the present Niger State, Ahausa, and Leonard Uwanoye Ogu from Asaba and Ibu. She later moved to the north, Kaduna to be precise, where she attended Queen Amina's College Kaduna for her secondary education. She graduated as a secretary at the Federal Training Center, Kaduna. Later, she obtained a diploma in secretaryship from Saleh Extension University, Chicago, and a certificate in computer science from the NCR Institute in Lagos. On 6 September 1969, shortly before her 21st birthday, she married Major Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida. They had four children, boys, Muhammad and Aminu, and two girls, Aisha and Halima. After her husband became Chief of Army Staff in 1983, Mariam Babangida became President of the Nigerian Army Officers' Wives Association, NAOWA. She was active when her husband became the head of state in 1985. Maria Babangida moved with her children into Dodan Barracks in Lagos. She had arranged for a considerable renovations to make the rooms more suitable for formal receptions. As First Lady of Nigeria between 1985 and 1993, she turned the ceremonial post into a champion for women's rural development. She founded the Better Life Program for Rural Women in 1987, which launched many cooperatives, cottage industries, farms and gardens, shops and markets, women's centers, and social welfare programs. The Mariamba Bengida National Center for Women's Development was established in 1993 for research, training, and to mobilize women towards self emancipation. She championed women's issues vigorously. She reached out to the first ladies of other African countries to emphasize the effective role they can play in improving the lives of their people. Her book, Home Front, Nigerian Army Officers and Their Wives, published in 1988, emphasized the value of the work that women perform in the home in support of their husbands and has been criticized by feminists. Working with the National Council for Women's Society, NCWS, she had significant influence helping gain support for programs such as the unpopular SFEM, Special Foreign Exchange Market, programs to cut subsidies and to devalue and fix the currency. She also established a glamorous personnel. Talking about the opening of the seven-day Better Life Fair in 1990, one journalist said she was like a Roman empress on a throne, regal and resplendent in a stone-studded flowing outfit that defied description. Women responded to her as a role model, and her appeal lasted long after her husband fell from power on November 15, 2009. On November 15, 2009, Rumors circulated that the former first lady had died in her hospital bed at the University of California Comprehensive Cancer Center in Los Angeles over complications arising from terminal ovarian cancer. However, an aide to the former president said Mrs. Mariam Babangida was still alive. He had said that he told her about the spreading rumor in Nigeria concerning her death and she laughed, saying those carrying the rumor will die before her. Mariam Babangida, however, died aged 61 from ovarian cancer on the 27th of December 2009 in a Los Angeles, California hospital. Her husband was at her side as she died. President of the Senate of Nigeria, Asadem David Mack, was said to have broken down in tears upon hearing the news. It was reported on her death that she was considered to be one of the greatest women in Africa today. Okay, that is all for Woman Crush Wednesday. Like I said while I was introducing today's episode of the Daily Show, I spoke about surprising health benefits of bitter leave. 
we all know it's bitter. Let's not go there. Of course, yes. But there's this amazing thing that comes with um, the health. You know, when you know that this particular thing has lots of health benefits and it could help you, you know, in maintaining your health level, trust me, you will close your eyes, drink and chew it. I, I, I always ask myself, for those that don't love to, you know, drink bitter leaf water, but then you love to eat the bitter leaf soup. And someone answered me, they wash it now. At least the bitterness uh, has gone down a little. Well, yes, we know that. So on today's health, uh, on today's topic on health tips right here on The Daily Show, we'll be looking at the surprising health benefits of bitter leaf. And trust me, this leaf has lots of um, um, surprising health benefits that a lot of people don't know. I remember one time that I was down with malaria and someone just told me, why not wash bitter leaf and drink? Trust me, you feel relieved. And when I did that, I was so amazed on how I felt. So enough of the um, talking, let's get down to business. Enjoy this documentary. Apart from using it for cooking, bitter leaf is rarely used for any other thing because people are unaware of its miraculous health benefits. And the sad part is that whenever it is used for cooking, almost all the nutrients are washed off the leaves. Even the leftovers are further lost to the cooking process, though leaving just a minute portion of its richness for our consumption. Of course, bitter leaf has a bitter taste and it is true that most people can't withstand it. But remember that the best of medicines comes with a bitter taste and bitter leaf is ranked high among them. From treating malaria, typhoid, diabetes, diarrhea, tuberculosis, gallstone and kidney disease, to the prevention of cancer and lowering of hypertension, the health benefits of bitter leaf goes on and on and on. 1. It relieves stomach ache. Almost everybody knows this because it is a well-known remedy for stomach ache. All you need to do is to chew the tender stem of the plant like a chewing stick and swallow the bitterness as the ache will stop within few minutes. An alternative is to pound the fresh leaves in a mortar and press out the juice. Add a pinch of salt to 3 tablespoons of the undiluted juice and drink. You will experience relief in no time. 2. It fights prostate cancer. Research has shown that prostate cancer is common among men who are over 40 years old and one of its known symptoms is difficult and painful urination. Bitter leaf, on the other hand, is very good for this alignment. It increases the flow of urine and reduces the pain as well as regulates the spread of the cell. To fight prostate cancer with bitter leaf, simply squeeze the fresh leaves in water and take a glass full four times daily while you constantly go for a checkup. You will urinate frequently, but don't worry about that because it is part of the cleansing process. 3. It fights pneumonia. Pneumonia is a lung inflammation disease caused by bacteria or viral infection in which the air sacs filled with pulps and may become solid. Inflammation may affect both lungs, double pneumonia or only one single pneumonia. However, the miraculous plant is powerful enough to combat this condition and tackle it. Squeeze the fresh leaves of the plant in water and take a glass full thrice daily. Always remember to warm the solution on fire each time before drinking. Do not boil, just warm and continue the medication for a month. 4. Insomnia Insomnia is a condition that promotes habitual sleepless sleeplessness and as funny as it may sound, there are a lot of people experiencing this condition. This group of people finds it impossible to sleep at night and no matter how hard they try, their effort is always met with weaknesses. However, studies have shown that bitter leaf extract has done wonders for those suffering from sleeplessness. Simply take two glasses of bitter leaf solution every night and you will experience a calmness that comes with relaxation and sleep. 5. It enhances fertility. 
Studies have shown that bitter leaf boosts the chances of pregnancy among women who are finding it difficult to conceive. And this because the detoxification power of bitter leaf helps prevent the pollution of the antibodies that fight diseases, initiate tissue repair and regeneration. This is known to boost the fertility of the ovaries significantly as well as eliminating ovarian size and premature ovarian failure.